Welcome back to round four of the Shannons Nationals here at Queensland Raceway. A beautiful day, greeted all of our competitors and race fans alike. And we're looking forward to going racing with the MCA Suspension Yokohama Tyres, Queensland Improved Production Racing Association for their race at two of the weekend. The Phil Laird powered car number 65 of the young man, Zach Hudson, came storming to victory in the RX-7 this morning. And there was a lot of improved production rotary fans around the country, which there are that were screaming from the rooftops and none other than, well, a guy that races an RX-7 or has done for a long time right alongside me, Cam Bannadon. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of love out there for the Rota, particularly with our Kiwi cousins. I don't know Warren Luff, who always tunes into our live stream on Shannon's Nationals as well. He's a big fan of those cars. A lot of drivers started their careers in improved production or spent a bit of time in there over the journey. And Darren, I know you've mentioned the drivers that are in our car sales TCR Australia category as well, but. So many different drivers have come through here. We know Steve Owen, a, a name that's been in and around touring car racing for many years. He uh, he spent a bit of time in improved production. Luke Adam Yulden. Macro, Luke, Luke Yulden. Yulden started great. in a snotty nose red RX3 at Phillip Island all those years ago. Overnight sensation, Luke Yulden. Over 20 years, sensation. But Marinelli lines right up alongside of him, and I would expect that he is going to put every effort into trying to claw back Kyle Organ Moore, the big mover in the last race, right alongside. Simon O'Dell Fontana there, and then it's Jason Clement back to Dukes, Lawrence Isari Arena. Then we go back to Swarbrook, Justin Wade. Watch for Justin Wade to move through this field as well. A very rapid BMW down there. Wilkinson, Carl, Carl Begg, who has been quite the chit chat around the social medias over the last couple of hours or so. Watch that BMW C63, A, sorry, that Mercedes AMG C63 come storming through there. Of course, Carl has spent some time with the uh, MRF Tyres Australian Production Car Series. Five seconds and we're about to launch for improved production race number two. The revs rise to screaming point down there and it is going to be the number 18 of Marinelli getting a great jump there. They're going to go three wide off the start line. In fact, four wide down into turn one. Odell Fontaine, Carl Morgan. Moore gets pushed to the outside there. It's going to be uh, a Nissan for an RX-7 another RX-7. Morgan Moore getting all all sorts of sideways through there, holding up everyone behind him. In fact, he's got them banking up with Jukes and Clements trying to get through there. Organ Moore's got the car pointing in the right direction here and absolutely nails it. Puts that six litres down to the ground and drives away. Have a look at the little escort starting to charge through there as well. Wade in the BMW just getting off the line poorly again there. So he's got a big charge to do. He's got 12 laps to do it. That'll seem like a long time to improve production some getting together down at turn three. Organ Moore dropping off the back of Odell Fontana in the battle for third place at the moment. 12 laps will be the journey in this race. So many different types of cars and look at them bunching up four wide as they make their way down into turn four and Zach Hudson up the front has gotten onto the back of Marinelli after that poor start from Hudson and a great start from Marinelli. Marinelli's getting monstered now. The RX-7 goes to the inside. This will be a definite move here. Keeps it keeps it going. Look at the lock-up from Marinelli. In fact, I thought it might have been the 65 there of Hudson that might have got the lock-up, but this talented youngster is driving the absolute wheels of this car. And I'll tell you what, we have found out in, uh, in since the last race and it's got a, a Phil Laird engine in it so you'd expect some good results horsepower wise out of that particular car and have a look at Marinelli now he's using the advantage of that big Nissan turbocharged motor SR20 powered motor which has been a really really good power plant for this category over the years right back with Phil Morris who uh, came along with the uh, the SR20 a long long time ago in the front of his Datsun 1600 and of course a lot of these Nissans running here this weekend. The Silvias, the 200 SXs with that uh, fantastic Nissan power plant. So many different types of cars out there at different engine specifications as well as Marinelli gets. Very wide on the exit there and quite loose. Now our two leaders in Hudson and Marinelli had some issues in that last race. After the chequered flag, Hudson ran out of fuel. So hopefully they've got enough fuel in it to make sure they get through this race as well. Marinelli actually had an ECU relay come loose and it turned everything off in the car. Hopefully these cars are able to maintain their speed throughout this race. It can be a slightly highly strung category. We see quite a few mechanical failures in this category, but that's because they're engineering these cars beyond what they were built to do. Well, the other thing, and this is where improved production has been such a great proving ground, not just for the races, but for engineering people. Ken Douglas, who you know was at the forefront of Motec, Bill Morris, again, forefront of Motec, 
that these guys came into this sport, they, weren't, they didn't actually ever even acquit themselves as a race driver. They were there because they liked the engineering aspect of it. It's a very strict set of regulations, and you can explore the boundaries, as everyone does in various different forms, but there's a lot of scrutineering and there's a lot of eligibility that gets done with these cars, and it's one of those categories that you can engineer to the set of rules, and everyone has their own take on how they go about it, and uh, just watching this car now doing a really, really strong job. Interesting uh, line that he took last lap around here, did Zach Hudson through turns four and five, went very, very wide. In fact, I think it might have been carrying a bit too much speed and understeered off. Just going to watch him come through the turn four and five complex now, because Marinelli monstered him on the way out of five last time round. Well, it's one of the challenges of driving an RX-7, Darren, and you, you've driven a rotor yourself. For, for those that haven't driven a rotary engine, it's it's a bit mind-boggling how high up in the rev range you've got to keep the car at all times. The power band comes on often after seven, seven and a half thousand RPM when most V8s are looking to shift at that stage. So it is a bit of a change of mindset when you're a rotary driver. You actually have to maintain higher corner speed and keep your foot on the accelerator to keep the revs up. Otherwise, you lose all power. Which is kind of interesting that we've got one leading this race because Queensland Raceway is a hard track to float. And a rotary-powered car, you want to flow it. You want to be able to link the corners and make everything go for you, your, your way. And like Similar to Winton, there's a couple of corners around the back of Winton where you can link a, a rotary-powered car nicely to flow it. But here at Queensland Raceway, the, the big brakes at turn four, the big brakes at three, and then again at six can often put foul to that. But Hudson is just absolutely driving magnificently. He's managing to flow QR in a rotary, so he's doing a tremendous job. Have a look at this. Kyle Organ Moore looks to the inside of Simon Del Odell Fontana there. Sounds like he should be racing NASCAR, doesn't he, Odell <laughs> Fontana? It, we talk about the various different specifications, you know, six litre V8s, uh, turbo, four or six cylinder cars out there. We've also got rotary engines. Weight differentials are a huge one in this category as well. The later model cars, the newer spec cars are traditionally much heavier than the early model cars. You'll see RX-7s with driver on board, they're getting down to the 900 kilo mark. So you've got a very light car, good on tyres, good late in the race, but they have a big power deficit. Although, you mentioned before Hudson with the Phil Laird engine, there is no power deficit in that car. He's not wanting for power there, is he? It's, uh, it's very, very well, and he's driving it nicely. Under brakes there, we're just watching the back of the car move a little bit, but he's not fighting it. You're not seeing his hands fight that movement of the car. He's unloading it, the back's wiggling a bit, he's driving it off the front wheels, and, and that's how you're going to have to do it here, under those big heavy brakes. Not worry too much about what the back of the car is doing. He's not trying to keep it straight. He's letting the tail wiggle around a little bit, and that's how you're going to be able to get a good time here at QR. You're either on the loud pedal or you're on the stop pedal here. There's no feathering of throttle and uh, doing a tremendous job as we've got Marinelli now starting to fight for it. Have a look at this, Odell Fontana, Morgan Moore. It's the, the battle of the uh, the two dads out there at the moment. These two fighting it out for positions three and four on track. Back to Jukes and Clements. And then it's Lawrence Begg in the big AMG. Then it's Cook and Swarbrook rounding out our top ten. It all settles down at the moment. It looks like Jukes is getting ever closer to the back of Organ Moore, but for those of you tuning in on the live stream, it's the 18-year-old Zach Hudson leading the 200SX of Marinelli. Odell Fontana and another RX-7 from Organ Moore, then Jukes, Clements in sixth, and Aaron Lawrence in seventh. Coming onto the straight now, just running up through the gearbox. A magnificent uh, change of gears in that Hudson RX-7 and the turbocharged car behind. Running these close ratio gearboxes, dog boxes these days in this class. H pattern still, so we're not talking sequential. It's still H pattern. You've still got to show some talent. And you've also got to be able to nurse the gear a little bit in these cars because they can start to tear gear up. So out in front now, really pushing the limit here. This is uh, some great racing here. And Marinelli, you just get the feeling that he's just wanting one little bit more to be able to take it up to Zach because the RX-7 won't fade too much throughout the race. It's at its strength at the start and it's still at its strength right throughout the race as well. He's watching down outside the tennis arena to Justin Wade, who's still down there in, in 12th to try and catch up with Justin to see what's going on down there. Wilkinson to Kingston, Johnston, Douglas, Herford, Hunter, O'Connor, down to Jukes and Dwyer rounding out the 20. Healy, 
Dean, Riley and McHugh rounding out the 25. So whilst the RX-7's tyres should maintain, it's interesting to see the way that Marinelli's been driving this race. A, a gentleman you know who held many a lap record in improved production, Rowan Ambrose, used to always talk about if you're the following car, to put the pressure on, make sure you look after your tyres, but put the pressure on so that the car in front has to defend and use up their tyre. These are still R-spec tyres at the end of the day, Darren. As Marinelli looks to the inside, down into turn one, he should get this job done. Gave him a don't argue on the way into turn one and two. Moved right over on him, the number 18. Gave the 65 the don't argue, I'm coming on through. And Cameron, good did you touch on, on Rowan Ambrose because Rowan Ambrose liked to lead the race from second position in a 10 lapper for nine and a half laps, size you up and then just absolutely tee off on you. And uh, he was a good proponent of it, held lap records right around the country. Have a look at this, what a great run. Watch for the don't argue, there it is. And there it is again. Just gives just, him, It's only a couple of millimetres no, here Darren, or there. He was looking to open up the corner. That's what he was doing. <laughs> just trying to give himself a nice run. There was no don't argue. And that was all gentlemanly. Uh, Nothing to see in, here, In AFL, it would be a don't argue and it would be <laughs> white line fever. That's what that was. Good stuff to see that. And that's what improved production has built its reputation on over many, many years. Of strong racing. Very briefly on uh, Rowan Ambrose to close that one off. Cadell Ambrose, young Carter on the rise as well. Young driver to watch out for. Remember so. where you heard that name first. Absolutely. He will be uh, the next generation, a second generation racer. Keep your eyes peeled for young Cadell Ambrose. He will be something, I would say, of a Jordan Cox type of a racer. A guy that's going to have to battle hard to get the support, but you watch the way he goes for it. Have a look at this now. Marinelli's led the last lap. He's got five to go, and you get to feel you feel as though that, that impetus out of the RX-7 might have gone a little bit as we start to come up onto, uh, onto lap traffic now as well. So it'll be uh, Croston. Uh, sorry, it's McHugh that uh, just gets out of the way for our race leaders to go through. Good room given there. That's uh, what it's all about. Unfortunately, yeah, when you are getting lapped, you, uh, they come up on you very, very quick and you think sometimes they're going to Drag, drag the mirrors off the side of your car as they go through, but good stuff there. And that's the other thing about improved production racing, Cam, is that there, there's various different uh, engine capacity levels. You've got the four to six litre guys, you've got the, the two to three litre, three litre to four litre, and you've got, the, of course, the under two litre. And in the under two litre category, as far as the nationals are concerned, sometimes the numbers match the, the, the outright cars as well. You, you would say that New South Wales has led the charge in terms of under two litre. They've really championed that cause. And, and you mentioned Jordan Cox racing in the car sales TCR Australia category this weekend. Well, he was one of those drivers. His father was one of the, uh, the people that really pushed under two litre racing along and has come along in, in leaps and bounds. Some, some wonderful cars now out there in the under two litre category as we continue to make our way around. Four laps remaining. Four laps remaining in race two for the Queensland Improved Production Series here at Queensland Raceway. Round three of their series. They've been to Morgan Park a couple of times and they'll go back there again to round out their what is another CAMS official series this year. So well done to both the Confederation of Australian Motorsport as well as the Improved Production Racing Association of Queensland. Here we've got this battle that uh, is just for the mid-pack at the moment. The escort in the mix there. Steve Hornville raced very well back in the day in the little escorts there as well as we're starting to see some RX-7s monster the, the cars there. This is for 10th place, 10th place, the number 37 there of Cook. And he is trying to chase down the Swarbrook outfit Car number triple nine. Very, very long number there. The triple nine, the BMW, just getting a little bit sideways there. So the Escort was uh, certainly back in the day in Australian touring car racing was a, a weapon of choice for numerous drivers. Alan Moffat, of course, had some running in that as well as we're just watching a position change down uh, outside the top five, coming down into turn six there. So it's that'll the be, BMW coming through. That'll be, though, Aaron Lawrence about to make his way up into fifth place. Remember, he had that spin in the last race. His brother, Drew, who's president of IPRA Queensland, uh, gave me the official uh, responses to what happened to Aaron. So, Aaron, this is your brother's words, not my... Out of talent was the uh, official diagnosis from the family. It's, uh, I'm sure that 
nothing quite like sibling uh, <laughs> assessment on your racing, is there? There's the, there's the honesty, uh, and might not always be exactly what happened, but certainly you'll get the honest truth from your siblings. That's well, sure. you'll get some sort of uh, you'll information. Get something. You'll get <laughs> Kyle Logan Moore there is, uh, well, he's not winning the battle of the two dads because Simon Odell Fontana is leading that one up, and there's going to be a position change or not. BMW being monstered under brakes. It's the 200 SX to the inside, driving out of the corner. Oh. And oh, look at that. I didn't think we had the Q1 Drift Series here this weekend, but that is going to lose him the spot that he just gained. So should we get uh, Drew on down in pit lane and find out what Drew's technical uh, uh, diagnosis of that moment there for um, for his brother Aaron Lawrence? You're not going to hold your spot leaving number 11s on the road, bro? Is that, uh, the, is that the deal? Correct. Look at this. So he got through. He was compromised on his... Mid-corner speed because he was onto the inside and unfortunately just lost the rear, chased it and managed to hold onto the car and hold onto his position but wasn't able to complete the pass. And what he'll, what he'll have had once he arrived down at turns four and five will be a very overheated Yokohama rear tyre, so he'll have to allow them just to, to come back to him a little bit in the, in the 96. So uh, trying to just bring it back is the OMJ car of Dukes, number 26 silver BMW, currently sitting in fifth place with two laps remaining. This is a good battle, and there we go again. The number 96 has definitely cooked its rear tyres. Having a bit of fun with it now. I'll tell you what, though, tearing the rubber off those Yogi's as he's uh, leaving big tracks behind him. Down into turn four this time. There's, there's the uh, Kyle Organ War car just in front of these guys. So. It's almost like the signal for uh, for Dukes to get on with it because he has actually just put a good gap back to Lawrence now and I would suggest that's due to the fact that he's really cooking up those rear tyres and that will feel horrible. It'll be like pushing a sponge around a corner in your bathtub. That gap between Hudson and Odell Fontana, you can see it on screen there, is closing up at the moment. So the gap between the two of them, just uh, about a second as we see traffic playing a bigger part in this race. Marinelli's cleared well and truly out at the moment as he commences the last lap of race two. In Hudson. fact, a note on that uh, car, our lead car has definitely changed. It's, uh, I would suggest, may have a header problem or something on that car. It's We've only got one lap left. It's certainly over the last two laps getting louder and louder as it's come past. May have, may have even pushed some stuffing out of one of the mufflers or something like that, but certainly picked up the volume as our race leader has come through. Carl Begg slowing in the AMG off to driver's right in the main straight there. So that'll be a shame. He pulls off into the grass there. Let's not hope, let's hope it's just one of those things that the kids have got to do these days. A bit of control of delete. So the two RX-7s in second and third on the last lap. Odell Fontana has definitely closed that gap right up now. It's under a second. Marinelli's cleared out. The car may not sound healthy, but it's running okay at the moment. Only a few corners to go. And Darren Smith, if he gets this done, that'll make it five career wins in the category for Troy Marinelli. He's doing a good job here. He's certainly done a lot of travelling. We've seen him racing his car up and down the eastern seaboard. And uh, he's getting plenty of racing in this category. There's plenty of opportunities at state rounds, at Shannon's Nationals these days, to, to run your improved production car. Uh, you're often seeing the interstaters come through. Race two for the weekend in the MCA suspension. Yokohama Tires Improved Production Association of Queensland. Race goes to Troy Marinelli in the turbocharged. Nissan gets to the line. Next is Zach Hudson, only just, and hangs on very, very nicely indeed over Simon Odell Fontaine. Kyle Organ Moore holds off the charge from behind with Dukes, Lawrence and Clements home in seventh place. So a wonderful effort from all of our drivers. It's Nissan, Mazda, Mazda on the podium of race two. Great to see there's still some life in the old rotors. And uh, wonderful, the battle's raging throughout the field. I, I really enjoyed that battle over fifth between Dukes and Aaron Lawrence as well, ever so close, but well done to Marinelli. He had that ECU relay issue in race one that cost him the opportunity. Just smart driving, Darren. He, forced Hudson to use up all of his tyre early in that race and that allowed him the opportunity to get the run down into turn one. So Troy Marinelli takes it out in the Nissan 200SX, Mazda RX-7s of Zach Hudson and Simon Odell Fontana in second and third, Kyle Organ Moore in the Commodore in fourth, the BMW M3 of Stephen Jukes just held off Aaron Lawrence in his Nissan Silvia in fifth and sixth, Clements 
Swarbrook, Cook and Izzarazina round out your top ten. Great race there for the MCA suspension improved production cars and uh, they always acquit themselves very well. Who can argue with in excess of uh, 28 cars on the track? There is a fantastic running. Justin Wade eventually got home in the Castrol Midas pair. BMW there in 12th. 21st, Aaron Healy, who uh, came out of the Gemini series. Nick Jukes in 21. Here's the start of the race again. Gee, it was a big jag out to the right-hand side of the back. Black RX-7 had the door closed by Troy Marinelli. Zach Hudson, how fat there with the Phil Laird power plant underneath him. Organ Moore got pushed wide. There's that little escort charging hard. Here's the triple nine losing it all under brakes, trying to gather it all up. And Cook in the escort hanging on really tight there and then the RX-7 getting beside. Gee, there's a race of the generations, isn't there? An M3 and an Escort going side by side down the long straight here at Queensland Raceway. The Dick Johnson straight, as it's known. There was the swap for the lead. And here is another swap, which was, we saw the 96 leave a big number 11. There it is. Two big tracks of Yokohama rubber being laid here at Queensland Raceway. And here's our eventual race winner. The number 18 of Troy Marinelli coming around turn six with the RX-7 of Zach Hudson in behind there. But it is the turbocharged Nissan that got to the line and took race number two. So one to the rotor fans, one to the turbocharged four-banger fans as we go down to the lane with Greg Rust.